I'm here with Ian Thornley of Big Right to talk about Pages and the current tour there that they are on. It's an absolute pleasure, honor to have you on the channel. A, a legend, a legend that I have here <laughs> chatting with me today. Uh, how's things going with you? Uh, not bad. Um, I have a day off in uh, in Nanaimo, and, and I have a very dear family friend that lives close to here. So I'm about to go up to his place and, and relax for the evening. We have a show here tomorrow. So let's talk about pages. But before we talk about pages, let's go a little bit back into seven. Did you take the same approach in terms of the creation, in terms of the process, in terms of the delivery from seven, and then you moved it over to pages? Is that is that the transition that, that I see happening? And uh, Essentially, yeah. I mean, I, the, the only difference, uh, one of the differences and, the, and a major one indeed is 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 that we we use nick rasculanix on this one and um you know from the very from the very get-go um as usually uh, well it's i mean it's the same the same idea as far as the release of it goes is, is that we recorded all the music at the same time and then and then we'll sort of stagger the the, the releasing of it um and but this time we did more we did 18 songs um and we're gonna the idea anyway is to is to release six at a time, uh, but yeah, it, it's it's sort of an extension of that idea of of would it would it benefit the listener more, um, and would we be able to get more of our kind of what I think our strength is as as a band? Would we be able to get more of that into people's ears if we if we gave them less? songs at once that's it, really yeah i was um, just going to ask you is, is this a more demanding and yet more rewarding process than just creating your traditional full-length record i don't i honestly don't really know yet um it's an ongoing experiment it's like with the sevens we we ran into we ran into covid and all that shit so it it, it sort of i didn't get it i didn't get a, a proper test result from from whether or not this is a is, is a, a great way for us to do it um but i yeah i mean for me personally i i kind of feel like i mean we have fans that are um that are really rabid fans and fans that listen to the whole if we release a, a 12 or 15 song album they've listened to the whole thing and have opinions on every aspect of every song and, and, and that's kind of the way i listen to music but i also get it that there's that we have a lot of fans that come to shows that just kind of want to hear the hits, you know, and and I, and I have room for that as well. I, I, I feel that way about a, a lot of other bands. Um, but I kind of, I kind of thought, always thought of us as more of an album track, kind of a deep cuts band um, than a, than a singles driven band. So I, I, you know, and I've said as much in many, many interviews, many times that I, I, I concentrate on every song, the same amount um i don't favor one over the other because i don't I, i'm not the one who's um i don't end up picking the, the single because i don't want to i don't like leave that to somebody else um but yeah it's, i mean i think it's i think it's working out you know at this point there's probably a couple of people who bitch about you know they want the whole record and, and i i get that as well i got room for that um and then, and the idea being, <laughs> excuse me, at, at the end of the whole thing, once these three EPs have come out, you, we could put them all together and have one cohesive record. Uh, we ran into some snags with, uh, we we have a new manager now. There were some some um, some hiccups on the business side of the music business, if you will. Um, so yeah, and I won't get into that, but um, yeah, that's all. It's all coming together as far as that goes and then as far as pages goes I, I i still think i love the idea of like it's a it's a collection called pages and then there's page one page two page three um and it, yeah and, and when people hear what what's coming down the pipe it, it'll start to make a lot more sense i think you know not that it's confusing now i think it's a pretty cool arc in just these six songs that you know we we got lucky with the choice that it was oh it kind of it kind of works you know it, it kind of buttons up nicely at the end and it opens up with this i always had an idea to open the whole record within fairlight like um as soon as that as soon as that demo was a thing it was like well this is an album opener 
but you guys but constructed yeah. this record almost like an album like when i listen to it it has a sense of beginning it has a sense of middle and then bird of paradise is a perfect closer track because i felt like it was a track that it kind of encapsulated almost the whole journey that took me up to that song uh you sing was a little bit by accident so you guys didn't put like some thought uh, process into it no it was I, well yeah there was a lot of back and forth um because there there are you know stylistically we can even break it down to that um you know stuff that's a little heavier um or stuff that's a little more textured um stuff that's a little more accessible or stuff that that asks a little more of the listener um and then just trying to trying to strike a balance with all of that within six songs um yeah there was like a list was initially sent out I think it was Nick had the first list and then there were a couple of revisions went back and forth and it was like, well, what about this? And then it was um, the only thing we did differently this time that we didn't do that. We didn't do this time that we did on, on the sevens is that we mixed all 15 of those at the same time. So they were just sitting ready to be released. Um, this one, we, we picked the six and then went in and mixed those. So the, the remaining 12 are, are still unmixed. Um, but they're recorded and they're done. It just it's just a matter of getting in there with with Ratsy and, and mixing them, which I think we're going to probably do in January. What are you hoping that holding those back and then mixing them separately? What, what are you hoping that will give the releases? Are you hoping to give it a little bit of more of a different fingerprint from EP to EP? Yeah, we we well, that's something we talked about. Um, I was like, what if we even tried getting somebody else to mix them? And I'm like, anytime we've tried that and not, i'm not dissing anybody but you know there's some some of our songs are um even more well known in recent years um mixing is a very it's a strange thing man because it can make or break like it, you know when you can say like you record something and you and i like printing effects i like i like painting the picture as we're going as opposed to like just go in there play the drum beat sounds good Play the bass. Sounds good. Here's some guitars. Here's some guitars. And then the mixer puts the whole thing together and like, let's use this drum sound and we're going to use this. Well, none of the real guitars. We're just going to use plugins and we're going to do all that. I don't really like to do things that way. I like to when I'm doing a vocal at the end of recording all the stuff, I want I want to I want to feel where the song's going. I don't want to just be singing over, you know, railroad tracks. You know, I want to be on the train. So it, it it's. We and we've always recorded that way. And sometimes what we've sent, there's been um, instances where we sent out a song that was like, okay, this is going to be a single. And I'm like, okay, well, if you tell me, what if we got it mixed by so and so? It'd be some big name Hollywood guy. And uh, you know, we've been listening to our ref mixes, like our board mixes, and we've recorded every stitch, every note, every hi hat click, ev everything has been is just so and that's how we're listening to it we're sort of massaging each each th thing that we put on top we're massaging what, what was underneath it before just to get it okay here's here's the vision here's the vision and then you can send it off to a mixer even if they're brilliant um like a really talented super successful mixer and they just you know sometimes they miss it and, and they get something you get something back there it's like what what is this <laughs> i guess this isn't this isn't their vision at all and then it's like, oh, but it's coming from so-and-so. So let's just give it a few more tries. And I would try to give it a few more of those, but it, it, it just wouldn't, it would never click. Um, so, I, you know, one of the, one of the thoughts, still is it was a long answer to a short, short question. <laughs> <laughs> one of the thoughts was like, potentially, yeah, maybe we could try, you know, some different mixers on this and that and the other. Um, but no, it, and I think that the initial idea wasn't to, to do that but that conversation was had the initial idea was just to like well let's do these ones these are the ones we have now and and we only have this kind of window of time with with ratsy or whatever whatever it was it was probably schedule uh dependent why why we just did the six but also you know with a guy like rats and and a guy like nick um they're always their wheels are always turning uh, i know rats has already gone through the rest of the 12 um, and gotten them ready to mix, and I know what that, what that, what his process with that uh, entails, and I know he's going to have, you know, more ideas that he's going to bring to the table, um, as well as letting something marinate for this long um, 
in a brain like Nick's, he's going to have some other ideas. And, you know, during the mix, uh, we were going back and forth with Nick was still in Nashville in LA. Like he was, he had already on another project, but rats and I were just like doing our thing and next leveling, next leveling, next leveling. And then it's like, send it to Nick. He'd be like, Oh, and then what about, and then it just, so, you know, things come together fairly quickly. And then you just get down to the nuts of nuts and bolts of like, is it too, too big in the bottom? Uh, is the vocal not wet enough? And just, you know, the sort of minutia, which can, at the end of the day, turn out to be pretty important uh, as to how the song comes across and, and impacts the listener. It's somebody who's near, like, think we're listening to this thing a thousand times. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we're so, so intimate with every aspect of it. And then you, you hand it off to somebody and somebody hears it for the very first time. It's like, the, the, you know, you want whatever feeling you were trying to convey in the writing of the song and through the recording of the song and in the mixing of the song, you want that feeling to stay consistent and, and impact the listener that way. Um, and I kind of feel like you, it's easier for a band like us to achieve that. If you're, if you have people that are involved in the entire process, you know, I would say every, every time I'd write a song, I'd send it out to the guys in the band and I'd send it out to Nick and, and Ratsy. So to, just so they're okay, here's what's going on. And then, you know, we go from there. So, That's so, out. So, so now the EP is out and you guys are on the road. You started the tour in in Hamilton, the what I refer to as the armpit of Ontario. No, no, oh. no, no insult intended. And, and you're finishing off in, in Toronto, uh, my hometown. Uh, was there a specific uh, reason for the choice of starting off in Hamilton and finishing off this massive tour in, in Toronto? Yeah, because I love Hamilton and my parents are from there and our bass player lives there. So I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, you shouldn't have. Uh, no, it's just it's just a uh, it that's all you know grown up stuff for them to discuss and uh, I think it was just a routing thing and then um, an availability of a particular venue. Um, and I, I'm a, I'm I'm born and raised in Toronto too, so but you know I get it. There's a whole <laughs> Hamilton thing but you know i i did i spent every weekend in hamilton when i was a kid i i, I love hamilton it's just like this this friendly rivalry uh yeah, between, it, between it, toronto it, and hamilton you know how it is oh well, of course <laughs> i was i was just busting your balls i'm just kidding um but yeah no i, I mean i never really know it's it's witchcraft how this did why why would we start in hamilton and then go out east and then go all the way yeah. back well, it seems confusing right it seems a little counterintuitive I'm sure there's, you know, there's adult reasons for it, but, you know, for us, we, you know, we made it, we made it all the way back to Montreal and then we had two buses and one bus caught fire, which is the second time that's happened to us in as many years. Um, So that bus got aced. Band and crew both got on the same bus, which is 12 people in one bus. It, It was rammed and we did that for all the way through till I think Regina when we got another bus and we're losing that bus after Vancouver. So we're going back down to one bus for the States. Um, Yeah. As far as routing goes, I don't know, but I'll take it. It's like the shows have been, the shows have been great. New stuff's been going over. The band's getting stronger and better with every, with every show, which is kind of how it always happens for us. You know, it always seems to, like i'll give you an example like with the you know like there's a couple moments in the set where where it's just like a it's kind of a free-for-all you know like take the inners out and let's just let's just go for it <laughs> and before we started the song where that thing will happen like it's say good to these i'm coming for you <laughs> like all right let's go like i'd love that kind of thing you know where because we're, we're all so confident in what what each other is doing that that it can it can become almost like a like a cat and mouse thing musically and uh you know it's it's that that's that kind of thing doesn't generally happen on the first night you know you, you're just like let's let's just make sure that we got all, all our ducks in a row let's make sure we like this set let's make sure the audience likes this set we made a couple changes to the set which which might change even you know as we as we go further down the road um but yeah, it's, dude, it's been great. It's been a tough one. It's been a really tough run, not just because of bus fires and stuff. There's been a lot of other other tumultuous 
distracting bullshit going on that's the sort of outside of outside of the t- 12 of us on the road mm-hmm. uh, well but you, you it, guys but, are on fire at the end of the tour. day you can get all rid, rid of all that and it's like give me that those hundred minutes a day that are the most important which is when we're on stage and there's people in front of us listening um that part that part has been the best part of the day and it usually is but this time it really feels like when we arrive at that moment it's it's like okay look <laughs> i really needed this and i really am really i'm really going to enjoy this i'm going to savor this so it's been you know the shows have been great um the crowds have been great yeah i, I got i got no complaints i got one last question for you and that is that uh i'm a huge fan of you guys when i first moved to canada uh in the mid 90s uh the first record that i bought was in loving memory of i remember waiting outside hmv for the doors to open on release day back when people still did that shit in order to pick up the <laughs> in order to pick up the record the 30 year anniversary is coming up soon or a couple of years away um have you have you stopped to think about that and and what would be the best way to celebrate that incredible milestone no <laughs> <laughs> No, and I, you know, I'm still trying to write. I'm still trying to write the one. You know, so I like um, looking back. It's it's a hard thing because you know they always say there's that that uh, second record curse or whatever the fuck they do. It's like, oh, well, you have your whole life to write your first record, and you only have a couple of months to write your second one. Like that's, I get maybe it's true for some people. I don't really buy that. Um, I think that the the only thing I can speak to on that is that there's a there's a level of there's a level of expectation um and excitement that you know that the excitement is different when you're putting out another record you know as opposed to like what is this who are these guys what is this what is this noise I've never heard anyone collect these noises and put them in together that like whatever it is that turned you on to the first big rec album that's your first love. You know, you have to really look at it like that. And, and that will always hold a special place in your heart. And for us too, for me too. Um, and then everything, you know, subsequently is, is, is going to be different and going to be, even though we've had bigger hits since then, um, the, we will always go back to like, yeah, but that first record, you know, and I'm kind of like, dude, I, I was like 23, 24. Like I, you know, I didn't know anything. And that's just like, I, I, I'm so much, I'm proud of everything that, that we did and proud of that record and everything. But I just feel like it's almost, a, it, it, it physically is certainly a different band, but, but I think sort of ideologically, it's a different band. We're just um, more open, uh, more elastic. We can go so many different directions and, and more musically mature. It's, it's not, you know, it's not just uh a bunch of pissed off kids trying to trying to stake their claim and and you know here's 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 who we are and we're better than you <laughs> there's a lot of that shit going on all, all going on back then but i but now it's just like well i don't really care about any of that how about this idea and it's just about the music you know i, I really sounds corny but it's true well, it was an absolute pleasure uh, to talk to you about your music. Like I said, I've been a fan for a very long time. So I'll I'll be at the Toronto date to see you guys perform at History uh, right before Christmas. It's going to be an early Christmas gift for all of us Torontonians. Have a safe tour. I know you guys are on fire, but but keep that to the life set. Uh, have a safe tour, and, and thank you very much for your time today. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Take care, man. Bye. Be well.